Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in the open beta next week, we plan to release our first iteration of the data link system for the Hornet. Now, the Hornet uh, has a two MIDS radio, M-I-D-S, which stands for Multifunction Information Distribution Systems. And then the Hornet then uses these two radios to transmit both uh, voice and data over secure network uh, using uh, the Link 16 network. Now, the information that's transferred uh, over the link uh, can be both uh, called PPLIs, which stands for uh, pre Precise participant location and identification so you can see where other players in the network are located as well as information of unknown in hostile aircraft that are detected by you and other donors that are contributing to that network. So for this uh, video, we're going to be doing an introduction. We're going to take this kind of one step at a time, and this will be a first video. Uh, there will be other elements that are, we're going to add later, and we'll uh, introduce those in later videos. So let's go ahead and unpause this. And the first thing we'll talk about is how do you turn on the MIDs or the, uh, the, the Link 16 uh, data link. And when you uh, do a cold start, you're going to have to turn on manually. And to do so, it's pretty simple. You're just going to go down here to a DL on the UFC. Uh, click that and then hold the on off button for about one second and then you'll have uh, the on and then also uh, actually the first frequency for uh, either voice A or voice B. So in addition to the, uh, the data link, um, you also have two different secure voice channels as well. So in addition to the ARC-210 uh, radio channels 1 and 2, you also have two additional uh, radio channels uh, with this. And uh, next, primarily when you're using the data link, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of the stick, you're going to be displaying it as a situational awareness display, or uh, SA, uh, here on the center um, uh, display. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So right now we have just the HSI. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up a couple things before I actually go to the SA display. So I'm going to uh, first go ahead and put a bullseye out there. So a waypoint, waypoint. Three data area waypoint HSI. Now let's go back to the attack page and select the SA. Now you can actually put the SA on the left and right DDIs as well, but you can only put on one at a time. And when it's uh, here on the NPCD, you can also uh, overlay with the map if you wish. So as you can see, this actually does look a lot like the HSI. So you have waypoint functions here, selecting the waypoint. Uh, cycling the waypoint through the sequence, a uh, waypoint designate, and the sequence button here. And of course, then here you have your information to that waypoint. Uh, and then if you have a bullseye set, you'll have your bearing and distance uh, from the bullseye to your TDC cursor here. And just like uh, the other uh, displays, you have to uh, set the display to make it active for TDC control. So in case of the MPCD, you will go uh, down or aft on the uh, sensor control switch. And as you can see now, we have the diamond here. So some other elements we could take a look at here is uh, in the bottom left corner here, we have our shaft and flare indicators. Uh, so we have 60 shaft and 30 flares. Um, the expand and step will come later as well as the uh, target designation. This will allow you to see where other members of your flight have their targeting pods, uh, actually not so much targeting pod, but where their uh, designated waypoint target is. And of course auto is just like we had in the HSI. And the top here we can do a decenter function. We can see more ahead of you rather than all around you. Uh, mark point scale. Uh, you can adjust your scale just as you do with the HSI here. And so earlier we selected the uh, waypoints, waypoint 3, and we can see that waypoint selected here as waypoint 3 with the arrow uh, pointing north. And if we scale back to waypoint 2 because it's not uh, also the bullseye, we see it displayed here as well in waypoint 1. Let's go ahead and sequence that. And declutter will come a little bit later. We talked about uh, map. And the next function is we go to sensor. We can now uh, uh, 
allow it to display what information we want to see and what information is feeding the display. So Link 4 is an older data link which will allow you to interface with uh, Link 4 systems. A FLIR will allow you later to see where your FLIR is pointing and HARM will show you the uh, selected uh, point for your pre-brief HARM target. Now moving over here to the right side, uh, we won't worry about OCS 1 and 2. Uh, so FF is for uh, friendly fighters and this will be other aircraft uh, on the net that have Link 16 uh, capability, whether it's through MIDs or JTIDs that are contributing to the data link picture. Uh, then you have uh, PPLIs, and this will allow you to display the icons for other aircraft uh, out there on your side. And then you have surveillance, and as you might imagine, those are surveillance aircraft, C2 aircraft like uh, E2s and uh, E3s. That's kind of, if you go SA, this will bring you back out again. If we scale in now, let's pause it for a second. So we see we have the three contacts here, uh, one, two, and three, and the numbers indicate the uh, prioritization of those targets by threat. And those are factored in based on uh, aspect angle, uh, uh, distance are the uh, two primary ones. And right now, we don't know whether these are friendly or hostile, so they're unknown. And they're unknown, uh, indicated by one, that they're yellow, and two, when you see a staple on the top of the icon, that also indicates unknown. Now, you can have both top and bottom elements, uh, too. It's called a HAFU, which stands for a Hostile, Ambiguous, Friendly, or Unknown, H-A-U, I'm sorry, H-A-F-U. And based on the identification of that target, it will change on color and shape. So right now we have three unknown targets. And when it's only your onboard sensors that are detecting the target, you're going to have the top portion of the HAFU indicated. If you have other donor information from other aircraft on the net, then the bottom portion of the HAFU will be uh, indicated. And as you might ima imagine, the line uh, coming from the HAFUs indicates the uh, uh, vector uh, direction of those targets. And you'll come up here and notice here, this also pretty much mirrors what we're seeing here on the radar. And the diamond right here, this is uh, basically an RWR indicator of the azimuth of the um, detector radar, in this case, a MiG-29, which we can tell that this is a MiG-29 or a 27 because they both use the slot back a series radar. Now, in order to do an identification, we can do this one of two ways. The first is called non-cooperative target recognition, NCTR, which is right here. And in this case, if the target is at a high aspect angle and within about 25 miles or so, uh, the radar will be able to uh, look inside those intakes and look at the um, forward fan blades and get a pretty good idea of what type of aircraft that is. And the second, of course, is a mode 4 IFF identification. So let's pause this for a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to select uh, NCTR here. And for this uh, first one, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, TDC to the right DDI. Move it over the target here. And we'll just put a uh, the target under cursor here. And we're going to press uh, depress down on the sensor select switch. And that will do a mode 4 interrogation of that contact. And we see that now it turned into a uh, red chevron with a one so that means uh, the chevron indicates hostile and the red indicates hostile now also because we have uh, the cursor here over the target we'll go get more information about that target down here at the top we'll get an nctr print identification we'll get the ground speed and heading and then we'll get the uh, bearing and range altitude as well as the uh, bullseye information on that target. And now we can do the same thing with the other two targets. We'll go ahead and do a mode four interrogation on them as well in a manual format. And we see that this next one is a friendly, indicated one because it's green, but uh, two because the top part of the half is a semicircle, which also indicates friendly. And then the third one. is also a hostile. So let's go ahead and 
put the uh, TDC back to the MPCD. We're going to move it over the target, and still unknown, it's still a bit far away. And also based on the vector, it looks like we don't have a good look into those antiques yet. So let's see if we can do that. The other one, no, it's also still unknown. And it's important to remember also, in order to get a um, IFF identification or NCTR, you have to do it through the radar display, not the SA display. Now, later, we'll be also doing the automatic functions for IFF interrogations. Uh, right now, we're just doing the manual, uh, mainly because the automatic functions require called the azimuth over elevation radar display, and that will come a little bit later into early access. So he's heading away, so we're not going to get a good uh, NCTR print on this guy. But nevertheless, uh, what will happen is you'll actually see an indication of what type of aircraft it is uh, based on the NCTR print. So that's a very simple look at using the data link in a situation where it's only your aircraft providing data. Uh, so next, now we're going to go ahead, we'll add a E2 element so we get a surveillance aspect to it. Okay, so I'm back in the uh, mission again. In this case, now I've added a uh, E2 Hawkeye to this mission. And this is in indicated by the symbol down here with the circle with a dot in the middle and a dot on the left side. Now, what this means is the dot in the center indicates it's a C2, a command and control aircraft. And the dot on the left side indicates that it's a donor aircraft that's contributing data to the Link 16 network. Now you also notice now the contacts look a little bit different now. We still have the staple on the top and they're yellow indicating that we've only identified these as uh, ambiguous or unknown aircraft. But on the bottom now they have indicators. So uh, the one indi as indicated one here has a uh, semicircle which is from the E2 which is a E2 is identifying this as friendly. And then the other two have uh, inverted chevrons on the bottom portion uh, indicating that the uh, Hawkeye indicates both of those as hostile. But because we ourselves, our own ship, has not identified these yet, they're still yellow. Let's go and pause this for a second. And what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and put the our radar in silent mode so we're not having our sensor uh, contributing to the data link. We'll only have the Hawkeye telling us what's out there. We'll let the uh, data link uh, update after uh, a few seconds here. And now we see uh, a small circle and a small red diamond, which are uh, indicators of a surveillance uh, indication. So we have uh, two red diamonds and one green circle from the Hawkeye. Now if we go ahead and go to sensors and disable surveillance, they disappear because now we have no sensors out there telling us anything. And actually, if I take off PPLI, we'll even remove our Hawkeye as well. So put PPLI back on. We'll put the uh, data link from our Hawkeye uh, on as well. And then again, once we put our radar back on, we'll get two sensors identifying what's out there. And just like we did before, we can go ahead and set the TDC to the radar. Put our TDC over a target manual designate and now we have a, a full red diamond indicating that both us and the Hawkeye have identified this as a hostile aircraft. Okay now what we'll do is we'll add a couple donor fighters to take a look at the picture. Okay so now I've added the next element which are other uh, friendly fighters on the data link. In this case we have an F-15 here and an F-18 over here. And when, uh, we can see that these are donors indicated by the dot on the left side of those circles. And we can actually identify uh, specifically who they are by assigning the TDC to the MPCD, again, indicated by the diamond, and then putting that cursor over one of these. So in this case, we see it's an F-15, the call sign SD-11, uh, distance of 13.5, and bra and bullseye information. And also I should note that uh, on either side of the cursor, we also have information about the targets. We have its Mach, in this case 0.4, and its altitude in thousands of feet, so 24,000 feet. And if we move the uh, TDC over to the other target, we see that it's uh, another F-18, uh, call sign SD-11 at a range of 10.8, and it's bra and B information. 
And again, we have both top and bottom indicators, uh, in this case, two hostiles and a friendly, but we haven't identified these ourselves, so they're still uh, labeled as ambiguous. And also at the top, I have some additional information. We come out of sensors here. We have the ability to turn off the RWR indicators on the HSI for hostiles or and unknowns. So we have regular and then critical and then off. And then we can do the same thing for uh, friendly radars as well, including IDs. And then also for unknown. And as always, we can always go back by hitting the SAP uh, button. So now let's go ahead and turn off the other sensors, the surveillance and the friendly, uh, actually our radar and the surveillance. And we'll let just the uh, friendly fighters on the data link pick it up. So surveillance off and radar silent. And what we should see are some red hafus with just the uh, bottom portion as a chevron. That will indicate that just those, uh, that F-18 and that F-15 are detecting those targets. And it will take a little bit for the uh, data link to update. It's, it's by no means uh, uh, instantaneous. So we see now we have a target here and probably detected by this Hornet. And if we go ahead and put the cursor over it, you see it's a MiG-29 with a ground speed of 269, heading 127 with bra and B information. And we can also see that, again, it's a MiG-29 based on the RWR code up here. And the other two just haven't been detected yet by that uh, F-15. Oh, yeah, 18 uh, detected the other one up here, which is an IL-76. Now, if we put our radar back on again, now we have a complete picture of those targets. And just like, again, as always, we can go ahead and bring up the radar and do a manual mode four interrogation. And now we've got a full half foo on that target as a hostile. Okay, and the last element we'll take a look at are other aircraft in your particular flight. Okay, in the last section now, I've added uh, three aircraft to my flight, so a total of four for a full division. And we do that, now we have icons with uh, B, C, and D for my other flight elements. So my wingman is B, section leader C, and his wingman is D. And of course, this applies to a single player and a multiplayer. And as always, we can assign the TDC to the MPCD and move the cursor over. In this case now we see we have an F-18, it's call sign uh, Colt 12. Uh, the call sign takes the first and last letter of the name and then the number. And then uh, the number after that is its fuel state, in this case uh, 13,000 pounds. And uh, again, standard uh, bra and B information. So in this way you can uh, see exactly where your wingmen are uh, in your division at all times as well. And these act just as other fighter fighter donors that will uh, help you put together a picture on your SA display. Anyhow, folks, that's an uh, overview of the first part of the uh, data link introduction. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.